it's me. Uh, but I'm not trying to victim blame her. Uh, so Juno swings around and stabs <laughs> Beth in the neck with her pickaxe. And then she yeah. is is left for dead. So not only is she killed yeah. by her friend, she is then abandoned by her friend before she is dead. Survives enough for Sarah to find her later and to set to real... Which is a little home. ridiculous. A little bit. And also when Beth said, Juno did this, don't trust Juno. I was like, maybe a little more context would have been useful. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I get it, you're dying, it's hard <laughs> yeah. to breathe. But you've just set up for your, your friends to kill each other. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sam... Uh, my Anne Burring's character is killed doing the, what I would consider impossible, uh, rock climbing along a ceiling. It's just, it it <laughs> yeah. cannot be done. I don't care how many times I see people do it, it's not possible. Um, no. And then she gets taken out in midair by a, a creature swinging around on her, slashing her throat. Awful. Yeah. Roger Rebecca just gets pulled backwards and eaten alive. Which one of those do you want to go through? <laughs> if you had to pick one. <laughs> Oh, so like by the, that question, it's like which one is the least bad? Like rank them? I don't know. Just just of of those four, yeah. what's 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 horrendous to you? Uh, wow. Um, the the thing is that none of them are. I guess Sam, the one hanging, is probably the most instantaneous. Like I think she goes the quickest. Uh. Yeah, well, I suppose it depends on... I think, in terms of the actual death, Holly goes pretty quick. She just has her throat ripped out. But she has to have the ordeal sure, of, of the injury first. The broken, and having the broken yeah, leg that, and the bone pushed back in. Yeah, that... I, I definitely am, am not, not down for the, the leg bone popping out of my... Uh, yeah, I don't want to see... If you ever bone. got a bite down on something, it's never a good sign. I think is the <laughs> No, <rule>. not at all. <laughs> yeah. So I'd probably take Sam first. Uh, I, and, you know, as bad as it is, I think I go Beth second because there's no eating of me occurring. No, so, that's during life, at least. Beth, yeah. True, true. But, yeah, so, like, I mean, I'm pretty terrible that her friend, like, accidentally is the one who kills her, but at least it's not these monsters. And, you know my friend is with me when I die. There's at least some sort of solace in all of that. It's all terrible, obviously, but uh, there's there's that. And I guess, I don't know. Who cares? I'm done at this point. It's <laughs> yeah. just awful. So You've already died twice by now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's yeah. no, like, yeah, I suppose that will be okay. Deaths in this film. It's all all awful. Uh, yeah. And of course, like, Sarah's it's... stuck on the ground fighting for her life, having gone uh, feral. And yeah, who knows what happens to her? Yeah, yeah, Ugh. yeah, yeah, absolutely. She definitely didn't get out. Of her. We, <laughs> so, we agree on that. <laughs> we so, we do, we do for sure. So uh, one thing I did appreciate this, just kind of looking into the the making of it. N- none of this was made on. None of the caving sections were made in a cave. It's all done on on a mm-hmm. sound stage. It made twenty one different stages. So great, and all of the lighting once they're down there is all. Like diagenic, it's all within the scene, so all from their headlamps or the flares or the video camera. There's no external lighting at that point, and I think that's a really good decision. It works really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it, it goes back to that kind of realistic take on this whole story. And I mean, I suppose they could have gone to some caves and stuff, but then it's dangerous. You and know, it's and, expensive. You know, it worked out yeah, cheap. Well, it's sure. cheaper to make the just make the sets. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And probably fun. Probably mm. for those guys who are making the caves and stuff and the mazes, I think they called them. Like, yeah, that could actually be enjoyable, you know? So, yeah, yeah I'm, um, I'm with you. I, and I mean, Sean McDonald, who played uh, Sarah, she is claustrophobic as well. So I feel like this would be better for her. Like, with the scenes where she's stuck in things, there's not a lot of acting going on. She was terrified. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think it's, it's kind of well known about the film, but the design of the creatures wasn't made uh, aware to the the cast until the scene where they first see mm. so but i'm not sure i don't think that worked in this instance because apparently the first when they were shown them they were just kind of ran off laughing uh, they were terrified mm. but they kind of picked up on what was happening pretty soon and so sure. i feel like they had to film it again <laughs> so yeah I mean, sometimes it works sometimes I, it doesn't and i think they they hold up pretty well yeah. like i thought that the effects of them like because i don't 
don't know how much CGI there was. Maybe in a few of those scenes there was like 10 of them or whatever, and you see them like crawling quickly. I think that was probably CGI. And I think the bats were CGI. Uh, sure. But uh, yeah, but of the creatures, I think it is mostly like act- actors in, in costumes uh, being terrifying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. I think it's just really well done. Again, that goes towards its you know, four or five million dollar budget. Like if you're trying to make it for that, like that's how you do it. You know, you, you throw some makeup on somebody, tell them to act like a absolute, you know, psychotic person. And then you get that. It's a good result. Yeah. It it worked very well. Yeah. The, uh, the, the use, the use of the flares and the headlamps and things. Have you seen, did you ever see any of the deep sea sequels? I have not. Okay. No, 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 not at all. Uh, but in deep sea (laughs) two, there's a section where it, DBC2 is not a expensive film and there's a scene where they have like a hallway that's flooded and they need to use that one hallway to show many many different hallways of the same uh, base so they do that mm-hmm. by just making it different colours uh, so it, the hallway is like bright red for some people it's orange, it's blue, it's green for others like just completely mm-hmm. the whole screen has got a blue filter on it and I like that they, they do that here to differentiate when the when everyone gets split up, uh, Sarah's got the mm-hmm. video camera, so she has this like faint green light and everything. Other characters have got a flare, so it's like a red light or a yellow light. I just appreciated that. It's it's easy production design. It's easy differentiating uh, for the audience, and it works well. Mm-hmm. Just to say, mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, yeah. now we're back with these people. Now we're over here with these people, and it's just Agreed. nice, nice visual yeah. communication. It worked worked for me. Agreed, hundred percent. Good. Okay. I really, I really like. I haven't actually said I really liked this film. Uh, it's, I'm glad. I, 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 <laughs> I think I knew this was your first time seeing it, but I don't know that for sure. So that's that's just good to know. It's good to know that you that you enjoyed it. And the the reason we're covering it on here, I haven't actually established that either, uh, is because it's, we've mainly been talking about films that have come up over the course of covering Deep Blue Sea and its sequels. And whenever uh, the 47 Meters Down films would come up, which I haven't seen, we're covering on a future show. Uh, the sec- on the sequel, Mark would always call them the Descent Sharks, because they're blind sharks. And I was like, oh, I've never ah. seen the Descent. But that c- it came up so often, I feel like, I mean, we should then just cover this. This is an opportunity to cover the Descent. And, I mean, I've got a list that we'll get to later on of how this film is like Deep Blue Sea. We'll do that at the end of the show. Okay. Um, but they're underground. They're below They're below surface level dealing with monsters is as much as I need <laughs> to make it Deep Blue Sea adjacent. So. Yeah. Uh, and the first we uh, discovered the first two letters are the same. Descent yes, and indeed. We both start with D, so yep, I mean, it's really all you need. Indeed. Uh, so another thing I, I, I like about this is normally in horror films you'll get a bunch of different characters making just kind of really stupid decisions, and I feel like we just have yes. the one. We just have Juno, who, as we've we've mentioned, they they're planning on going to uh, these group of friends. They just they have like an annual trip to go and do some kind of adventure. Yeah. I assume they know each other from school or something, but it's never really established, but it doesn't need to be. So Juno is, has become kind of a bit of a daredevil. Got a bit, she wants to yeah. push herself, and her protege, Holly, isn't helping things. Uh, but like, they're, they're going to go to the Borum Caves. And, oh, it's the Borum Caves. It's like a level two. It's going to be so dull. So Juno has taken uh-huh. upon herself to take them to an uh, unexplored, uh, not on the maps, unnamed caving system. No red flags ping in her mind through any of this. Um, of course not. And so they, they've they've told the, the local authorities where they are, in case anything goes wrong, but they are not where they are. They are somewhere else. Uh, that's a stupid decision, which is unforgivable, <laughs> kills them all. But the second stupid decision, yeah. I would say, is... Obviously, I'm not a fan of people having affairs. I don't think that's what anyone should do. But if you are having an affair with your friend's partner, don't wear a giant necklace inscribed with that person's one key saying that they use for their entire (laughs) life, and then wear that around your friend. That, to me, feels like a mistake. A stupid decision to do, because Sarah's husband... (laughs) Yeah, you're asking for that, thing. (laughs) asking for exactly you're asking to be caught you want that apparently so i agree completely that's a that's a pretty silly plot device but it there's a good payoff with it at least so yeah there's there is that but 
Cause I like, would throw Holly running up there as well, by the way. I know you kind of talked about it already, but that's a pretty stupid decision. Yeah, I think so. I, I feel like in, in the heat of the moment, she is this adrenaline junkie. She does feel like, oh, I'm going to go. She should know better, agreed. Uh, and mm-hmm. that, that is definitely on the list of stupid decisions. Uh, but I, I, I consider the two that Juno makes to be worse than that. Because uh, I, I, I yes. feel like even if they weren't, the, like the night before when they were having just they were up, up drinking and getting to know each other and reminiscing it would be like for Sarah to go oh do you know what is that necklace I've never asked about that let me have a look at that and that's it she just sees the necklace and it says <laughs> love each day uh, or love every day whatever was, was the husband saying and we're yeah. done I, what did, what, what, did you get this man well, as like a, a tribute to my dead husband <laughs> right. he, had, he was seen off guess, that uh... day what <laughs> <laughs> I guess the only thing to think though is that maybe then they all live because if if they get into a big fight that night and they don't go out hiking then they're all still alive that's a what if episode for you that is indeed uh, we'd be then grateful for the affair uh, <laughs> <laughs> right See, that's, there you go good affair we found a good affair yeah sometimes adultery can save lives sometimes <laughs> <laughs> ridiculous uh, <laughs> and then yeah I, I mentioned the when Sarah finds Beth and Beth says Juno did this I again I get it she's in a tough spot she hasn't got a lot of time or words yeah. left to say uh, but then it that really sets up Sarah for the rest of the film where when Sarah reunites with Juno she says Sam here no, Sam died was Rebecca here no, Rebecca died I thought what does, does Sarah then immediately think that Juno killed them too because the last thing she had from Beth was like, uh, don't trust Juno. She's out for herself. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with you 100% on this. It's it's not like Juno intentionally killed Beth. And it was clear no, with how Juno responded. You know, she was clearly disturbed by what happened. So, you you know, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I, 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 I get it from Beth's point of view. I'm going to be pretty pissed if I'm Beth. I'm just, let's just be honest. But at the same time, it's there's not a lot of time for nuance and context when you've you know been pickaxed in the neck and left for dead. You know, so. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, this isn't a fun film to live through. It's a better film to watch. <laughs> I think we can all agree. No, <laughs> really no is. one, I no know. one's having fun in this film. <laughs> No, that's why I think it's actually good that they give them that first, like, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes where they're drinking and laughing, joking, and, and all that stuff. And, like, not all the scenes work, not all the, you know, like, little snippets of them in the car even driving, and, like, two-second little thing, and then back to the establishing shot of them driving. Like, not every moment works, I have to admit. Some of them are, like, mm, almost, like, groan-inducing, but it is at least fun where you're seeing them kind of enjoying themselves and whatever before they get to the you know whole, whole part of everything and they do seem to be enjoying the cave when they're first in it you know and all that like so you can see that they definitely enjoy this but then yeah once everything goes sideways i mean it's just it's impossible not to uh not to let the good times just kind of go away for a little bit yeah and when we were saying earlier about you know spelunking not for us i feel like if i knew it was like an easy cave like a level one, level two, and I was like, it's gonna be a clear route, you just have to walk through it. There's none of this tight squeezing, and there's, there's no mm-hmm. like, even like the the um, going down the rope that, that to start with. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not a fan of that. If there's none of that, if it's just you walk into a cave, walk around for a bit, mm-hmm. walk out of a cave, I was like, yeah, I can, I can see that being, uh, I can see it being pretty down there, sure, uh, yeah. If I haven't got to do any rock climbing, so I, I, I can't do any rock climbing. So uh, another really good scene is when, when they have to first make that ceiling cross when uh, Rebecca, I think it is, has to do the, the yeah. climbing, like free climbing across a, a, a horizontal rock ceiling, uh, putting in uh, the little, I don't know the lingo, I'm sorry, the rock climbing little rope harnesses as they yeah. go. Yeah, but... I think it's a carbiner, I think, carbiner or something. Ca- carabiner like that, are the little, the little clips. That much I know. There you go. Uh, yeah. There okay. go. I mean, I don't know. We'll, we're not experts. We're we'll, not. We'll, we'll admit it. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, I, I realized that scene because you, it really felt like she was doing it. Like, she it was a very well acted, lots of grunts and 
um, and uh, sounds of exertion as she was doing this, as we've discussed.